right, so we're going to start off chapter three with our 3.1 notes, relations and functions. We're going to determine the domain and range of a, a relation or function in set notation, table of values, and graphs. And we're also going to determine if a relation is a function using sets, tables, and graphs. And for graphs, we're going to use the vertical line test. So our first two vocabulary words here are domain and range. The domain is the set of all inputs, or the x values. And the range is the set of all outputs, or the y values. We can think of every function kind of like a machine. So say we have the function y equals 3 times x minus 2. This function, or this rule, says that when we plug in an x value, or the input, we have to multiply the input times 3 and then subtract 2. So let's say our input is 6. So when 6 goes through the machine, we're going to figure out the output by performing this operation. The input, which is 6, is going to get multiplied by 3, and then it's going to be subtracted by 2. So multiply by 3, you get 18. Subtract 2, and we get 16. So our output is 16. So that input, 6, 6 is a part of our domain. And when we plug in 6, we get y equals 16. That's our output, which is going to be a part of our range. All right, so our first two examples. So find the domain and range for each set of ordered pairs below. So when we identify the domain, we're going to write this in set notation using brackets. And we're really just listing off these x values. So the x values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are a part of the domain. And then for the range, we're going to list off the y values. Now we do have this 13 in here three times, but you don't have to write it multiple times. You just have to put it in there once. All right, for part B, identify the domain and range. OK, so domain, remember, those are the inputs. So we have 3, 8, and 5. And for the range, our outputs are 7, negative 2, 4, and 0. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and do the U try problems. All right, so check your answers for determining the domain and range. For part E, if you'd like, you can list off all the ordered pairs first and then identify the domain and range. OK, so more vocabulary we're going to be getting into. So a relation. A relation is a set of ordered pairs, just any list of ordered pairs. Now a function will be a relation, but it has some conditions. So in order for a relation to be a function, each input or x value is paired with exactly one output or y value. And when you're looking at a table of values, you basically want to see that x is not repeating in order for something to be a function. When we have the graph, we do a vertical line test, so we draw a vertical line. A relation is a function if a vertical line drawn anywhere on the graph intersects the relation only once. So if it passes through the graph more than once, then we can say it's not a function. For each relation, is it a function? So let's check out the x values for this table. So we have x values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Each of them are being paired with their own y value. So yes, um, you have some y values repeating, but because all of the x values are distinct and none of those are repeating, then we can say, yes, this is a function. All right, let's look at this mapping diagram here. 3 corresponds to 7. 8 corresponds to 0. Just follow the arrows. 5 corresponds to negative 2, but 5 also corresponds to a y value of 4. So this right here shows us that this x value 5 is actually being paired with two y values, but we can only, we can only pair with one, one, one y value for it to be a function. So that means that this is no, not a function. 
When we're given the graph, we're going to do the vertical line test. So draw a line anywhere through the graph. Notice that it hits this relation in two places. You go over here, it also hits it in two places. Okay, so that means that no, it's not a function. Again, let's do the vertical line test. So draw a vertical line. Oh, it only hits it once. Vertical line only hits it once. So every time we draw a vertical line, we can see it only hits it one time. So yes, that is a function. Again, do our vertical line test. Only hits it once. It's only hitting it once every time. Okay, so yes, that's a function. All right, pause the video and do the you try problems. Okay, so let's check our answers. Moving on. <clears throat> Example three, so Terry goes to the carnival and the amount of money he spends can be modeled by a function in terms of how many rides he purchases. So basically, um, depending on how many rides you go on, your cost is going to increase. Each ride costs $2. So which of the following best models the domain of this function? So domain of this function is going to be the number of rides. Let's see what would make the most sense. A says that you could go on zero rides, or you could go on one ride, you could go on two rides, you could go on three rides. Um, B says all real numbers, but all real numbers also includes negative numbers, but you cannot go on negative amount of rides. Um, for part C, it says he can go on one ride, on two rides, on three rides. But, I mean, you could really, you could go to the carnival and not spend money on any rides. So we want to include zero in there. And part D says you can only go on zero rides, two rides, four rides, six rides. So we're going to have to go with A. You can go on zero rides, you can go on one ride, two rides, and so on. Which of the following best models the range, which is going to be the money spent? So let's figure that out. If you go on zero rides, that means you're going to spend zero dollars. If you go on one ride, you're going to spend two dollars because each ride is two dollars. If you go on two rides, you're going to spend four dollars. Three rides will be six dollars and so on. So now we can see that our range is zero, two, four, six. Find the domain and range for each function below. So now looking at a graph, okay, if we look at the, this linear equation here, or this linear function, it has all these points on here that correspond to x values. Every coordinate on here has an x value or an x coordinate. But it's not just those points that I drew, it's all the points in between there. And look, there's even arrows. So this is actually going to continue on in both directions forever. Because of that, um, there are no restrictions on this domain and range. So that means that the domain is going to be all real numbers. And the range is going to be all real numbers. So all x values, all y values um, can be used on this linear equation. All right, so checking out our domain. Again, looking at all these points, all of these correspond to these x values down here, all these points, but not just these points, all the points in between correspond to that as well. And we can see those arrows. So again, our domain or the x values in this function are gonna be all real numbers. Basically, anything can be plugged into this function. Now, for the range, those are all your y values. Okay, again, all the y values on this line, let's, let's identify a few. So that's the point three comma three. That's the point negative four comma three. This is the point zero comma three. And look at what they all have in common. They all have a y value of three. So this range, the only y values all along here, they're always gonna be three. So this range is y values mm, is just three. <laughs> Let's write it like that. 
All right, so the domain for part C. So again, we're looking at all the x values being used. So that corresponds to an x value, corresponds to an x value, and so on. And see how that's going to continue left and right forever to infinity. So again, all real numbers for our domain. And for our range, notice that here the y values don't go any lower than negative 4. So all the y values being used are up here above negative 4. And so we have to describe those y values. We want all the y values that are greater than or equal to negative 4. Okay, because it does hit negative 4 down here. Um, but it doesn't go any lower. It only stays above that. So sometimes we do use an inequality. Okay, so we do have this last question here. That's a challenge. What is the domain for the relation shown? So your domain are your set of x values. So the furthest to the left it goes is to negative 5. And the furthest to the right it goes is positive 5. All these points along here, they have x values in between negative 5 and positive 5. And so are the ones all along here. So we have to describe all the values that are between negative 5 and positive 5. So again, we're going to use an inequality for that. So if we want to stay to the left of positive 5, but to the right of negative 5, then that means that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 5 and less than or equal to positive 5. 